Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dom and we are here at the LA Auto Show and we're checking out some Hyundai Sonatas and not just because I'm a Hyundai fanboy, but we are checking out Android Auto and Apple's new CarPlay. Yes, the 2015 Hyundai Sonata is packed with Android Auto and CarPlay in the same vehicle. So you can basically switch between them depending on which device you have or one of your friends or family members have. It's pretty cool and we are going to put these two head to head to see which one offers the best in-car mobile experience. So let's go ahead and check it out. Right here we have Android Auto. This is a user interface for your car that is basically a projection of your Android device inside of here, making it a little bit safer and easier to use it while you're on the road. So we're gonna go ahead and check out some of the features here that come along with Android Auto. So getting the device set up is actually rather easy. All you have to do is plug it in via the USB port and micro USB cable. And as you can see here, we have a Nexus 5. And once we plug it in, the Android Auto interface will automatically appear on the screen and you're pretty much all set up. So as you can see on the bottom here, we do have our our navigation and right above that we have some Google Now like cards and this will show you relevant information just as Google Now would. As you can see we have maybe a recent place that I went to, somewhere that I might have visited or somewhere that I need to go like the time it would take to get home, things like that. You can see that we have the weather below that and everything is laid out exactly as you would like to see it with Google Now. So it's a very friendly environment, a very familiar one as well. So starting out with some basic functionality, we do have the ability to receive and respond to text messages and as you can see I have a notification there at the top just tap on it and the interface will begin reading me back the text message and then I have the option to respond to it. Here's the message. Going well, I'm really looking forward to lunch. So once I've heard the message, I can hear it again by tapping on that notification or I can go ahead and respond to the message by tapping on the microphone in the top right corner or pressing the dedicated button on the steering wheel. From there, I can initiate my response by saying the word reply and speaking my message. Next up, let's head into the phone app by tapping on the phone icon down there on the menu bar. And here we are presented with a list of recent calls and the ability to access a dial pad up at the top there. So you can dial any number you'd like here, go ahead and send it out through your Android device and while in a call you have the ability to end the call, mute the call, and pull out an additional dial pad on the side there and on the right side it will also display the contacts picture. Using the menu in the top left corner we also do have access to our voicemail, speed dial contacts, and missed calls. So you basically have full access to the entire phone app from your Android device using Android Auto and we even have these nice little animations here that you see when you reach the top of the list. So there's a lot of attention to detail going on here. Android Auto wouldn't be a complete in car experience without navigation and if we tap the button in the bottom left corner we can pull up Google Maps and as you can see this is pretty much identical to what you have on your Android device we can pinch to zoom we can go ahead and use the buttons on the right hand side to zoom in and out get our exact location we have a compass button there and in the top left corner we can access a menu with suggestions categories and even have the ability to toggle on and off traffic we also have the ability to search for locations using an on-screen keyboard and as you can see I pulled up sprouts farmers market it so we can call the location or navigate to it using the buttons on the screen. Now everything is pretty familiar here and I like the layout of this navigation system. On the home screen we do have a card at the top that will show us our current navigation so you don't have to be directly in the Google Maps app in order to navigate but we can tap on that to access that map once again and see it in full screen. Along with navigation we do also have music controls which we can access by tapping on the headphones button and as you can see here we have the Google Play Music app with all of our controls available even the ability Ability to like or dislike songs and if you tap and hold on the headphones icon down there on the menu bar you can access different services such as Spotify, NPR One, Joyride, Pocket Casts, and SoundCloud and other apps will be integrated in the future. Jumping back out to the home screen you do have a card that will display the song that's currently playing and you can tap on that to access the app again. While Android Auto is still in beta it definitely has a lot of promise. Of course third-party app integration will be rolling out upon its official release but right now I'd say it looks pretty pretty well put together and I'm very satisfied with the experience. So now we're gonna be checking out CarPlay and as some of you may know, this is Apple's solution to using your phone in the car. Now they keep the features and interface right here on the screen and basically you hook up your iPhone and you have everything projected onto the screen in the car. So let's go ahead and check out some of the features and functionality that comes along with that. Setting up CarPlay is no different than Android Auto. Simply plug in your iPhone and you will have the CarPlay logo pop up and then on the screen in front of you, you can go ahead and 
tap on the Apple CarPlay icon to launch the interface. So once you have CarPlay pulled up, as you can see, we have a familiar experience when compared to iOS. We do kind of have a bland layout though with a black background. We have our signal bars, time, and LTE status on the side. And if we launch the phone app, it's basically dictated by Siri. So you can show the contacts, but you can also speak to call a contact right there from the phone app and it will complete your command. Like I said, you can alternatively tap on the show contacts button or you can press the home button to access your favorites, recents, keypad, contacts, and voicemail right here from the screen. Like Android Auto, we also have access to music and we can launch the music app to see our radio stations and playlists, artists, songs, and more. And you can quickly access those by scrolling up and down through the list or play one by tapping on it. And it's just as easy as that to navigate around. Nothing too complicated going on here, pretty much identical to how the Google Play Music app works with all of the options available. Jumping into the Maps app, I did have a little bit of lag here opening it up, but as you can see, it's a pretty familiar interface. We can zoom using the controls at the top, and we can also pinpoint our location with that button there, and we can turn on 3D mode as well to kind of get more of a natural navigating experience. We do have our recent destinations button there over on the right-hand side, so you can see the different places that you've recently been and navigate to those, getting your estimated time of arrival and be able to choose a specific route if you'd like to. Overall, it feels just about as polished as the Google Maps app. Jumping into the messages section, you'll begin to notice a trend here. Most everything in CarPlay is controlled by Siri. So you have the ability to speak your message or phone call, things like that, and respond to messages using Siri. And then Siri will go ahead and read your message back and allow you to change that message or send it off using the on-screen buttons or your voice. CarPlay doesn't actually allow you to see text within messages, but you can access your message threads and tap on them in order to send a new message or respond using Siri. Again, everything is controlled by Siri here, but you can access those individual threads. If I've received a response, I can go ahead and tap on the messages app and have it read me back the unread messages or compose a new message. If I'm anywhere else within the user interface, it will actually have a pop-up as you can see there on the screen and you can tap on that in order to access the reply functionality. So you're using Siri basically the entire time to reply to messages or make phone calls. So now playing section will allow you to view what's currently playing in the car. So as you can see there, we have the song and artist name. We have additional options as well, but not much is offered in this area. We also do have a podcast app, which you can open to find your recent podcast, but I do not have any loaded at this moment. Now there are also third party apps that are integrated into CarPlay, such as iHeartRadio and Spotify, and the list will continue to grow over time. So keep in mind, this is all in very early stages and we will have other third party app integration in the future, but they're all based on apps that are currently installed on your iOS device. Just like Android Auto, CarPlay is just an interface that runs on top of what's already there. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're looking at either of these systems. So now that we've had a chance to check out Android Auto and CarPlay, which one do you prefer? I'm kind of leaning towards the style and functionality of Android Auto, but luckily with the 2015 Hyundai Sonata, you can have both. So let me know what you think about them down in the comment section below and leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching everybody. This is Dom and have a great day.